Good day, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Five Goats Hashtag RWA and Tokenization podcast series. Today, we have a really, really powerful insight from someone who has been in this, in this, operating in this space for quite some time and is going to be able to share with us sort of the state of tokenization today. It's very important that we all know what limitations there are today and what is needed in order to advance the space even further. And today we're welcoming Carlos Fernandez Mazzi. He is a creator of Finca Token, among other projects that he'll introduce on his podcast. And he has his unique story. And when we first connected on this topic, uh, we had a very candid conversation and he expressed some frustration. And I was talking to him and saying, you know what, this is actually very insightful that nobody is saying this out of all the people I've talked to. I hadn't heard this perspective on the tokenization space yet. So over to you, Carlos, welcome yourself uh, to tell us a little bit about your introduction and then go ahead and, and tell us, share your story with us. Yeah, thank you, Brad. Thank, uh, thank you for this opportunity. And just to set the stage, I would like to give you uh, two uh, perspectives that I think, uh, I think are important for, for your audience. Number one is that uh, after a career in, in, in investment banking and mining and some philanthropy, I got into blockchain uh, as the underlying technology behind uh, Bitcoin. And I was fascinated by the technology because I'm, I'm an engineer and I love all things, you know, tech. So I was, I was really fascinated with, with uh, blockchain and I was studying it and, and going deep into it just when the first crypto winter hit. And when the crypto winter hit and blockchain went, uh, or uh, Bitcoin came down from uh, 20,000 to I think 3,000, you know, the world was dev devastated. Uh, the, the crypto world was devastated. And yet, for me, it was the aha moment when I realized not because a currency loses value uh, does the technology invalidate. So it does not invalidate the technology behind Bitcoin. So I was convinced then that really uh, blockchain was going to reshape finance into the future. And uh, I was more than convinced that uh, at that crypto winter, that for blockchain to really have an impact, you had to have the tokenization of tangible assets, real earning assets, uh, and really to converge the traditional economy with blockchain technology for the future of finance. So that is the first, the first perspective that I really, because of the winter, I realized that real assets are the future for the future of finance. And the other uh, perspective is that I come from the developing world. And in the developing world, regardless of how well you do or how good your company is or how, what a great idea you have, financing is a real, real challenge. And at the same time, as I was realizing about blockchain technology and, uh, and, and, and its ability, then I also realized that this really uh, could be the enabling factor for a, you know, a more inclusive world uh, uh, in that blockchain technology could really have an impact on the future of finance with the democratization of capital, uh, more uh, cross-border capital flows, less friction, less cost, etc. And that really, um, I was convinced back then in 2017 and 18 that uh, you know blockchain technology was going to be really the future. And we embarked on uh, not promises, but on a, on a real project that we led. And, uh, and I, I will let you comment and I, we can go into more detail of what we did. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to learn about your projects because one of the things that uh, really it, it encompasses this entire narrative of tokeniz tokenization of real world assets is that you focused on an entire value chain. And this is how capital is created. And now you've created a compliant token for this. And then you came across your own challenges, which is pretty much the state of everyone that has a compliant token right now is going to face the exact same position. And that's going to be liquidity, a lack of an exchange, exchange infrastructure and regulated bodies to work with. So tell us about your journey of creating your token and then where that led and, and what you learned. Yes. So our our um, we called our our journey uh, and our Finca token. Uh, from grass to cash with crypto finance. That was the, 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 uh, the, the, the title and, and the, the view and really the vision of what we did from grass to cash uh, 
with crypto finance. And we uh, looked at the best value creator on earth, and it happens to be a cow, an animal, uh, because this animal uh, will convert uh, grass into protein and protein is converted into cash. So really the impact of an animal is that beyond the nutrition uh, that it provides via uh, milk or beef, et cetera, it really uh, creates value because an investor can really obtain value from the value creation of an animal. So that was the genesis and the inspiration for creating a token that would actually capture that value creation and uh, hopefully give the opportunity for investors to uh, uh, be able to participate in that. So uh, we created the Finca token, uh, as I say, from grass to cash. We did uh, as the convergence of uh, value creation with blockchain technology. Uh, and the, the Finca token is a very innovative revenue share token. It's a, it's a financial uh, uh, digital asset. And uh, we followed all the rigor on, 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 on uh, uh, compliance, uh, uh, financial rigor, accounting, et cetera, et cetera. And we did a lot of innovation on the legal framework, financial engineering and all that. And we are very proud that uh, our effort was validated by the fact that the Federal Tax Authority of Switzerland gave, us, uh, gave our token holders the withholding tax exemption uh, if they invest with us. Uh, that uh, in itself is very, very attractive and interesting. But beyond that, I think it expresses the fact that uh, um, uh, we uh, underwent a very, very strict Swiss uh, due diligence that validated uh, all the things that we did. So um, uh, uh, our investors have received a, their dividends for the last uh, three years, and uh, it has been acceptable and very good. But uh, I think that we were a bit ahead of our times. We were a bit of ahead of our times because when we launched in December 2019, uh, the expectation of the market was that there were going to be, uh, you know, security token exchanges and marketplaces and trading, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, here we are today that in 2020 it didn't happen, didn't happen in 21, uh, didn't happen in 22. And still today in 2023, uh, there are no regulated security token exchanges. There's no liquidity for security tokens. And there's really no uniform um, regulation that uh, security tokens uh, should follow. There's a lot of initiatives, but this has not happened. And as a result of that, even though we consider our Finca token a premier uh, type of financial instrument, uh, it remains as a private investor, investment vehicle. We cannot trade anywhere because there's no, as I said, no uh, regulated exchanges. And this limits any other initiative that you have uh, for other players to, to try to bring in digital financial instruments via tokens because there's no, no, um, uh, no trading venues. So in essence, we survived two crypto winters we uh, kept our value duty during the FTX implosion. Our token holders re received their returns yearly, but here we are and we are still hoping for a systemic uh, advance and uh, a greater adoption of, uh, of uh, digital financial instruments. And I really hope that this, uh, these interviews that you are having and you are talking to a lot of people on the real world asset uh, tokenization, I hope that we contribute to the development of the markets. And uh, so that uh, I can go into more detail as to what the Finca token is and, and, and what we have in the pipeline as well. Yeah, it's really interesting. And most people don't know uh, that Carlos started his project in 2017, which is one of the longest runways that I've, I've heard of so far talking to many CEOs about who went through that journey to bring a token to market and, and, and become a player in the space. And one of the things that's really interesting is that, you know, you've created this Finca token. It's successful. Your investors are getting paid back already, which you're right. You are ahead of your time. There's a lot of people saying that's about to happen, but you've got years of this already on the books. So can you tell us just a little bit more about these additional financial instruments and what this innovation has led to and what you're bringing to market next? Yes. So uh, our initial token, the Finca token from grass to cash, had to do with uh, cattle and the value creation of a cow, as I mentioned. 
However, if you look at the value chain of other commodities like grain, uh, different grains or metals or minerals, etc., uh, there is so much potential and so many opportunities to create financial instruments to uh, actually uh, uh, participate in the financing of, uh, of different stages of, of the value chain. And uh, we are concentrating more on the, uh, on the, on the uh, uh, agricultural value chain, because in the end, uh, you know, the world has to, has to eat. Uh, and uh, we are in, uh, based in, in Latin America. And we believe that if you invest in the agricultural value chain, you can get uh, superior returns in agribusiness. And we are convinced that uh, blockchain technology and the tokenization of these different value creation activities can represent uh, an incredible opportunity for innovation into new instruments, into new uh, uh, trading mechanisms, and really uh, representing a revolution in the evolution of uh, into the into the future of finance. So going beyond our uh, our Finca token based on cattle, um, I don't know how many people are aware, but uh, uh, Latin America is the world's uh, supermarket. The region has significant influence on, on, on uh, global agribusiness. And between Argentina, uh, Brazil, Paraguay, Bolivia, Uruguay, etc., we're the largest producers and exporters of sugar, coffee, soybean, poultry, corn, pork, beef, as well as cotton, uh, orange juice, grain-based ethanol, etc. So, uh, you know, the, the, the consumption of food and protein, especially, is going up uh, because of the of the uh, improvement of living conditions in the highly populated areas of the world, like uh, uh, Asia, China, India, Africa, etc. So we are in the right uh, in the right market uh, in the in the agri agricultural value chain. Uh, we can develop, and I think a lot of people can develop different financial instruments based on blockchain technology. And what we need is a systemic adoption of digital assets based on blockchain technology. And we hope that uh, you know, we, we get players that are regulated, that can represent exchanges, liquidity providers, or, or marketplaces, so that uh, uh, you know, uh, all these new instruments can really revolutionize the, 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 the future of, uh, of uh, finance. As I mentioned to you in our earlier conversations, uh, you know, we hope that people can copy and replicate what we do. We certainly are going to do it. We're going to copy, uh, replicate, and scale our Finca token into other grain tokens, be it uh, uh, corn, uh, soybean, sorghum, or, or wheat. And in different jurisdictions, it could be in Argentina, in Brazil, or any, any country. And we hope that people can follow uh, our model, they can copy it. I'm sure they can improve it. And, and I think that the, the, there, is, uh, there is incredible opportunities for investors, for producers, uh, and for different countries uh, to adopt new digital, digital assets based on, on blockchain. What we need, again, and sorry to be so repetitive, we, uh, we are hoping and we're waiting for greater adoption by institutional investors of, of uh, digital assets, tokenized uh, uh, instruments, and, uh, and, uh, and, and we are firm uh, believers that there's a world of opportunities for, for creating instruments and for uh, really leveraging blockchain technology for a number of things. Number one, for creating more cross-border capital flows with less friction, less cost, uh, less barriers uh, to provide uh, financial inclusion to uh, farmers, to, to people in the, in, the, in, the, in the value chain, and to democ democ democratize capital as well. Because if you can allow for different small retail investors to participate in uh, this value creation chain via uh, digital financial instruments, then the world be, will be a, a, a much better place. Yeah, and one of the things that we discussed too when we initially uh, spoke is I, I kind of expressed to you kind of our approach here as if I go to talking to all these founders and bringing these projects to light 
And our our belief here is that there's no competition in this space right now. There's so much to tokenize, and there's so much you know activity out there that can be that can be executed on. There's just not enough uh, companies to do it right now. So everyone can operate at full capacity and tokenize happily together. And we're just going to cut into a fraction of what what there is going to happen eventually. And your model of approach, you know, I believe you told me that you were advised to patent your token and patent your process. And you said, no, my my philosophy is that it should be copied. Someone should take this and improve on it and grow it and scale it and make it better, which is something that, um, you know, we believe in that need is needed in the space as well. I just wanted to highlight that. So adding on to that, you know, Carlos, as far as what you're what you're looking for next and, and what's going to, you know, push this forward and then get you more traction. What is it that's going to that you see is, is needed right now? Well, um, I tell you that my mind is focused on two things. Number one is finding distribution partners for this innovative financial instruments that are, you know, uh, tokens that represent real world assets. OK, the distribution is key. So half of my, my, my time is devoted to uh, forging partnerships and forging alliances with distribution partners so that we can uh, distribute, we can sell, we can trade, and uh, not only us, but all of the existing instruments can trade and create liquidity and create opportunities for investors uh, in different jurisdictions to have investors from Asia investing in Brazil or having European investors investing in Argentina with no friction and, uh, and less cost. That is half of my effort of trying to do that because we have the Finca token and we have other initiatives. So that is, that is one, and we are going to continue uh, while we can until we can hopefully achieve some, some alliances and some partnerships with distribution partners uh, for this to happen. And I think once we do that, the market should, should really uh, grow uh, exponentially. And the other half, and the other half of uh, my dedication is to uh, create new instruments and to see where we can unlock value, where we can leverage blockchain technology to create, uh, you know, better instruments, how we can, uh, uh, while we uh, are compliant and we are within all the rigors of uh, accounting and finance, et cetera, how we can leverage blockchain technology into a specific value chain. If it's in agriculture, if you're going to be on the production side, on the transport, on the logistic, on, on the trading, the same happens for minerals. Uh, you know, we are thinking of ways in which we can get into the mineral uh, value chain uh, from, you know, the mining, the, 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 the logistics, the transport, the refining, the selling, et cetera, be it in zinc, be it uh, copper or, or gold. And uh, so that, that is the other dedication and, 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 and the things that keep me up at night is the, actually the, uh, it's the initiative to, to make a difference and to really uh, come up with ways in which understanding blockchain technology and understanding the value creation chain in one, any one of these activities, we can come up with uh, ways of uh, creating the future of finance. So as I mentioned to you, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an engineer by training. I'm a banker and I have, you know, I've worked in, in sustainable development and financial inclusion initiatives in different parts. And I think I want to get all that together. And I think it, it is those two things. How do we get to distribute uh, digital assets, tokenized real world assets, real earning assets, tangible activities, and at the same time, how we uh, create new instruments and how we uh, stimulate other players to come and to say, hey, I'm in, in this space, I would like to do this, I would like to do that. And actually, th this is happening. We, we are called by people from Argentina, from, from uh, Brazil, uh, financial institutions that are intrigued by what we do, not because we're geniuses or anything like that, it's just because we're doing something different. And when I say we, I, I would like to highlight here that is, I'm talking about the royal we, because we, we, uh, we are the product of uh, the best players in the Crypto Valley in Zug. So it's not that it's me or my partners. Uh, we have started this with my two sons that have their uh, corporate jobs, which are very successful on their own. Uh, but we have started this dream together and we have uh, 
created incredible alliances with the best players, the best minds in, uh, in platforms, in legal, in, in finance, etc., in the crypto valley. So when I talk about the we, I'm talking about the royal we in, in, in trying to make a difference and to really see that blockchain technology and tokenization of real world assets is going to really make a difference in the developing world, in the developed world and uh, everything in between. Yeah, that's a lot of innovation. And uh, and one of the things I recall from one of our conversations, uh, you had mentioned how, you know, tokenizing stocks, tokenizing T-bills and what we see happening now in the, the use of stable coins and stuff like that is being pushed forward. But your legal innovation took you several years and you uncovered a couple of key differences there. And can you just highlight a little bit about what's, what that meant for you and what you can tell us as far as you know, who's out there tokenizing everything and just behind the curtain a little bit on, on what's really out there? Yes, well, uh, I think when you talk about innovation and leveraging blockchain technology for advancing finance, uh, I think we're talking about, uh, you know, tokenizing real earning activities in real world assets. Uh, when, when you tell me that, you know, they are tokenizing BMW shares to be sold in, in, you know, into the developing world, I don't think there's much innovation there. I mean, I'm not criticizing, but I think that there's a lot more opportunity in looking at the underlying assets and doing the financial engineering, the compliant financial engineering to create a financial instrument to uh, be able to be traded on a cross-border basis, you know, uh, as I say, uh, in a compliant way. Uh, to, to tokenize T-bills uh, uh, or, or German bonds or, or uh, you know, uh, stock exchange uh, shares uh, or, or, or any other existing financial instrument with blockchain technology, it's nice, it's okay, and I think there's going to be room for that. But I would like to see more uh, effort and innovation on what I'm, I've been uh, telling you, the, the, the real value creation activities that are many, Many, very many, uh, we are focused on, on the agricultural and the agribusiness value chain. But if you look at mining, if you look at oil and gas, if you look at industry, I'm sure that there's a number of uh, uh, opportunities for creating financial instruments with innovation, leveraging uh, blockchain technology. So really tokenizing uh, assets uh, or tokenizing stocks or bonds, it's interesting, but I don't think there's great innovation there. The innovation is in creating uh, a new instrument based on a real world activity, on a real world uh, or real earning uh, asset that, uh, that you can uh, engineer them on. So I, I don't know if, I, if that was clear, but basically I think there's a lot more room to look at innovation on things that have not been done rather than copying uh, the stock market on, on the blockchain. Yes, I, I think the digitally traded stocks and stuff like that is not as new as hearing about an entire commercial value chain being tokenized and how the people can take advantage of that. So it's a super interesting narrative and we look forward to following your work. And one of the things is, is that you mentioned that if there is an exchange out there that can onboard with liquidity and legally sell these tokens that you want to talk to them, right? I know in our database, I know for a fact that we have companies as the first ever fully compliant, regulated securities exchange, but still it's not happening. And that's one of the insights that we connected on and why we're talking about today um, on this show is that, that 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 progress is still hindered somewhere, right? You've got a token and we have people saying that there's an exchange ready to go, but it still hasn't connected and, and it's not flowing yet. And that is going to be the next leap in in the uh in the space i think you touch a very good point and i missed i missed it at the beginning um, i think that people need to understand uh what you know tokens are okay so there's plenty of exchanges today that trade cryptocurrencies they trade uh, uh bitcoin ethereum solana cardano etc etc that is not regulated because they're currencies. So those exchanges exist. And then you also have exchanges that trade other types of tokens, either utility tokens or NFTs or other tokens. So there are exchanges for tokens, right? 
What there is not is exchanges for financial instruments in a digitized form or in a tokenized form. So when you talk about a digital financial instrument or a security token, or there's other denominations, then you run into the problem of regulation. And you run into the issue of regulation in which the US has certain regulatory requirements. Japan has different, uh, Korea has different, Singapore has different, Europe has different, and that's where you hit the wall. That, that is the limitation as to why there is no security token exchanges. There are exchanges of many kinds, but not for security tokens or for digital financial instruments. So that is the real challenge for us uh, in, 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 uh, as, as issuers of a, a financial instrument. And I hope that uh, we can see there's many initiatives out there of, of people trying to create a market for security tokens and financial instruments. And I hope that at least one comes up on a regulated way, because obviously you can do it unregulated and that is worth nothing. Um, uh, if there's a regulated security token exchange that will uh, enforce their uh, uh, compliance rules and, uh, and, and tokens can be security tokens can be listed and traded, then we will see the adoption and, and the new, new markets coming. So I, I think it's an important point to say that there, there's token exchanges, but not security token exchanges or, or financial instruments ex exchanges. So yeah, what we need to find or what we need to see is that whole loop being closed so that we create these instruments and there's liquidity and they can be traded legally, globally, and that's going to be the next level to unlock the uh, the tokenization narrative here. I really appreciate your time, Carlos. It was super insightful. And I, during our work, and if we come across anyone that's telling us that this is the right alignment and uh, they have what it takes to work with you, I hope that I make a great introduction, connect some dots. And uh, I hope this moves forward and I look forward to your work and I want to have you back on a, a different episode when things progress and things change. And I also know you're a philanthropist and have great stories out there. We only have a certain amount of time today, but I think that uh, we'll be talking to Carlos one more time at least. And, uh, and Carlos, thank you so much for being here and I look forward to our next conversation. Yeah, no, thanks for the opportunity. And just to say that a closing statement would be to say that you know, we believe in the converge convergence of value creation of traditional uh, activities with blockchain technology, and that uh, that will be the future of finance. And I hope that a lot more people uh, start adopting uh, uh, this uh, approach. And we, I'm confident that five years from now, we will look at, it, at this interview, and, and I hope we will say we've made a bit of a difference. Yeah, definitely. It'll probably be a whole different discussion and no one's even going to be mentioning tokenization. It's just going to be everything is tokenized probably in exactly. the next decade or so. Yeah. Well, that's what we're discussing now. It's great to be part of this financial movement. It's very exciting times. And I we, we love talking to innovators and true creators. And uh, thank you again for being part of us. Thank you. Good talking to you.